Hey, welcome back to the Your Financial EKG YouTube page. My name is Drew Blackston. I'm a certified retirement counselor, investment advisor representative, and I am your virtual financial advisor, helping you get to retirement, helping you get through retirement, and protecting your ability to stay in retirement. Now, I have a very special Can I Retire video today. I want to talk about Can I Retire with $8.1 million in retirement investments, retirement savings, retirement assets, whatever you want to call it. Can I Retire with $8.1 million. Sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But let's get into it here in just a second. But before we go into the Can I Retire with $8.1 million, make sure if you're not subscribed to the Your Financial EKG YouTube page, you hit the button below to subscribe. Also, smash the like button if you enjoy this content or you continue to come back to these videos or you find this content useful in your retirement journey. And also, leave your comments, questions, and yes, your sarcastic remarks below. I know there'll be plenty of those with this video. So let's get into today. Can I retire with $8.1 million? Now that sounds kind of I don't know. It sounds kind of sarcastic to say that because most of you probably think, of course you can retire with $8.1 million. But one of the things that I always say on the Your Financial EKG YouTube page, the podcast, anytime you talk to me, is that everyone's retirement is different. And for these people, their retirement is much different than your retirement. And their concerns, they might be similar to yours, but their concerns with their retirement assets are different. And how we address those answers the question, can I retire? So let's get into it today. We've got a couple, they're age 66 and 61, they're asking the question, can I retire? Now, in retirement investments, okay, they've got $6.1 million. That's in retirement investments like 401ks, IRAs, SEPs, and defined contribution plans. They've got retirement savings of $2 million. That's sitting in a money market account, but it's earmarked for retirement. And they're going to do a retirement contribution out of this $2 million of $1 million throughout this year. Okay, now, not all of that's going into qualified retirement accounts like 401ks or defined contribution plans. They also have brokerage accounts set up so they can do more contributions than the IRS allows in a qualified retirement account. So we've got a million dollars earmarked for retirement investing. So total retirement assets that are invested for retirement right now is $8.1 million. We have a home that's paid for that's worth $2.5 million and we have equity in our business of a million dollars. So we have all of this invested or paid off for retirement. So the question becomes, can I retire with $8.1 million in liquid assets and then we've got about another $3.5 million in physical assets that obviously would have to be liquidated if we needed them for retirement. Their main concerns, now these are big concerns for them, taxes. Taxes are a huge concern. Let me flip over here real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Taxes. Those are the big concerns, especially if you have big money. RMDs, required minimum distributions. The IRS requires if you're over the age of 72, you have to take a required minimum distribution. Well, they've got a lot of money in qualified accounts. So what is their required minimum distribution going to do to their taxes? Now, let me say this too. Just because they have $8.1 million doesn't mean that their tax concern is not different than yours. You might only have $500,000, and I say only because that's comparing those two, but you might have worked really hard for your $500,000 in retirement assets. Taxes are important to you as well, so we need to be thinking about that. Estate taxes. Now, in their case, estate taxes are very important. It's very different today with estates, so estate tax is very important to them. And obviously, everyone's concern is inflation. 
what's inflation going to do to our retirement investments. So I want to get into this today. Can I retire with $8.1 million? I want to show you how much income they need, what an inflation is going to do, but I also want to talk about taxes and what they can do to help lower their taxes and really reduce the tax burden that's going to be on their kids and on the generations that come after them when they pass away. So hang on right there. We're going to get into it. All right, let's talk about can I retire with $8.1 million in retirement savings and retirement investments, okay? Now, I want to go through this scenario and I want to kind of do something a little different than we do on most of our can I retire videos. Remember, our concerns are taxes, required minimum distributions, estate taxes, and inflation. So I want to address all four of those real quick. Now we've got $8.1 million. We're 66 and 61 years old. Our income need, our retirement income need and our retirement income want for this couple is $320,000 a year. That's over and above Social Security. Okay, now remember everyone's retirement is different. So don't judge what these people want in income versus what you want, right? Okay, so we're going to earn 6% a year. We're going to do this for 10 years. Now, off of this $320,000 in retirement income, they're going to have to pay $124,000 in taxes per year. That's the highest tax bracket because that's where they're falling. And they've got to make a decision. Do they want this net or gross? Meaning, do we need to take $124,000 over and above this and turn this $320,000 figure into $444,000? Or do they want to take it down? Meaning, three hundred and twenty is the gross, we take out hundred and twenty four for taxes and then the balance, what's left over, is what they use for income. That's a decision that they'll have to make that we'll work through. So three hundred twenty thousand dollars, now I'm assuming that taxes are coming out as a net, okay? Ten years, earning six percent, they'd have ten million two hundred ninety eight thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars in ten years. Now, at 76 and 71, we've got $10,298,000 in retirement savings. We're going to earn 6% a year over 10 years. Now, inflation has kicked their butt. $436,000 is now their retirement income need. We're running inflation at 3%. Taxes are a whopping $170,000 a year. I want you to see that. One twenty-four dollars a year, $170,000 a year. That's their taxes because of their income. At the end of 10 years, they've got $12,783,000. So some of their concerns, taxes and required minimum distributions. Now, a required minimum distribution is that when you become, when you're over the age of 72, you have to take out a required percentage that the IRS lays out. For them, a that portion of their RMD is going to be included in these income figures that they need. So we know that they can retire, but what the big thing is in this situation is their taxes are going to kill them, right? They're going to pay a ton of money to Uncle Sam. And at their age, there's not a lot they can do. You know, people say, well, they can do a Roth conversion. Yeah, they can do Roth conversions, but you know, there's a five-year rule on Roth conversions, and then there's the taxes that they're going to pay, and they're probably going to be in the high tax bracket. So it doesn't doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for them to do Roth conversions at this point. The other big deal is estate taxes. You know, if they were to pass away here, their estate is going to owe about $4.9 million in estate taxes. Now, I don't mean that in the sense of the estate is going to pay taxes, but out of this qualified money, out of this retirement money, uh, there's IRAs, there's 401ks, there's a fine, uh, defined benefit plans in here. So that money is going to pass to their kids as qualified money. Now the rules on qualified money, so IRAs, 401ks, things like that, when you inherit those as a beneficiary, a non-spouse beneficiary, you have to pay that money out. You have to pay your taxes out in over 10 years. So essentially, they're going to have $4,985,000 tax burden at passing, which is $498,500 over 10 years. That's a lot of taxes. And people say the rich don't pay their fair share. I'm pretty sure they are. Now, what they can do, a thought, and what we've talked about with this couple, is doing what we call an irrevocable life insurance trust and having life insurance for $5 million. Now, what we do is to make it inexpensive for them 
is we put the life insurance on both of them. So it's called a second to die policy, meaning once the second person passes away, the life insurance proceeds of $5 million are paid into the trust, the Irrevocable Life Insurance Trust. And then the uh, trustee uses that $5 million to help pay the taxes on the IRAs and things that have been passed on. Okay, now everybody's situation is different, but an islet is something that anybody can do, and it's something that you can talk to your financial advisor about. You can go to my website, Your Financial EKG, and we can talk about it together. But this is just something that they really have to think about. Can they retire? Sure, they can. They got plenty of money. But What's it going to look like tax-wise when they retire? And this is something that affects everybody. I don't care if you've got $500,000 in your retirement assets. I don't care if you've got $500 million in retirement assets. Taxes are a huge piece of the overall puzzle, and you need a tax plan. So I hope this has been beneficial. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Your Financial EKG page if you're not subscribed yet, and please leave your questions, your comments, and I know you're going to leave those sarcastic remarks below. I read them all, and I try to respond accordingly. So thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.